Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Brush and I make indie games for a living. Today we're gonna make an illustration for a creepy sort of haunted mansion. Uh, just to be excited for Halloween coming up. It's my favorite holiday. And so let's go into Photoshop here. We're gonna start with a 3840 by 2160 canvas and that's 4K. Uh, 4K is a good idea when you're making video games especially because you definitely want to make sure that you have a high res image and you can always res it down in Unity, which is the software I use to make video games. So let's go ahead and jump into our 3840 by 2160 canvas. And the first thing I'm going to do is start uh, with some swatches. So I like to have some kind of gradation between two colors. That's the first thing I do when I'm doing an illustration. So this is going to be our gradient. So let me show you what I mean by gradient. I'm going to merge all these layers together. I'm going to duplicate them and then I'm going to create a new layer, press alt so that I can put a layer on top of this layer. And I know that doesn't make sense, but hold on, hold your horses. <laughs> I'm going to create a new gradient here and I'm going to choose these three colors for all of our gradient points. Okay. The opacity is going to be 100% on all of our colors in this gradient. And finally this color here. And I'm going to do an opacity of 100. There we go. And I'm just going to fill in over top. See that? So now we have a gradient and then we have three swatches that we're going to use for our creepy haunted world. And we're definitely going to need a black color as well. So I like to put another black swatch about right here. Now I never use true black. I like to have sort of a fade, a faded sort of faint black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this orange and then I'm just going to drop it down very dark to about right here. So here's our creepy uh, haunted scene that we're going to do here. So I'm going to merge all of these colors together here into one sort of swatch palette and I can pick and choose from this this little swatch palette on the left side of my screen um, while I'm doing my illustration. I'm going to choose a simple color for my background that's going to be this foggy greenish weird color here. Oh, it already looks really pretty. I like that a lot. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and come forward um, from the background slowly with some mountains and some, uh, I guess, creepy trees, creepy scenery. And I'm only using a mouse today. I'm not going to be using my Wacom pen tablet. And a Wacom pen tablet is what a lot of illustrators use for their video games. I'm just going to use this simple mouse and I'm kind of doing that to show you guys that you don't need a lot of crazy equipment um, you can just use a mouse in Photoshop and with the right principles you can get a really beautiful scene all right so I'm just gonna use this lasso tool here and I actually use the lasso tool a lot when I'm creating my video games and by the way guys I've created two video games never song and pinstripe and everything I've learned in those games everything everything I've learned in those games uh, I've actually put into an, a comprehensive online course. It's called fulltimegamedev.com and it teaches you everything you need to know from illustration to code uh, to Unity and even marketing your game, uh, putting it on Kickstarter, publishing it. There's a whole ton of really cool things on that course if you guys want to take a look at it. It's, it's in the link in the description. But anyway, let's go ahead and do our, uh, our mountains. Enough about my course. So here we go. Let's just draw some mountains. I'm not going to be too specific here. I'm just going to do some kind of a shape here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly go towards this color here. Okay. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to select this color. There we go. And that, man, that's a, <laughs> that's a vibrant green. I'm going to do a color overlay and I'm going to pick the background color and then drop the opacity down to about this. See that? That looks cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here and create some more mountains. Let's see here. Something like this. I'm going to fill that in. I'm going to do the same thing. Fill in with the green here. And we're going to just duplicate this color overlay with Alt. And I'm going to drop down the opacity like this. Very cool. And do another layer. Let's see here. Whoops. There we go. And same thing guys, nice green here. We're going to do a color overlay and just drop down the opacity to about here. There we go. Something like that. All right. 
And then now we're gonna go from that green towards the orange, okay? So we're getting a very subtle gradient. And I'm gonna start thinking about, let's see here, where I'm gonna place my little haunted mansion. I think that'd be cool to have a haunted mansion in our game. You guys can put whatever you want in your game. I'm gonna put a haunted mansion. I really, really like <laughs> haunted mansions. I also really, really like the like button. So if you guys could click the like button, that would really mean a lot to me, guys. I'm trying to make this channel, uh, honestly, a dream of mine is to have it blow up and hit a million subscribers. Having you guys click that like button is really gonna help me, uh, you know, get this video out there and hopefully get people learning about illustration and game development, which would be really cool. So if you could like and subscribe, that would really mean a lot to me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a color overlay here and just blend in, see that? Blend in some of that orange. And I know what you guys are thinking, you know, sometimes things look really, really bad <laughs> when I'm putting together uh, the mountains here. So if I, for example, fill in this mountain here or this hill here with just a vibrant orange, it looks really cheap, right? But if you slowly do a gradient here, there we go, it starts to look more realistic and that's exactly what we want so we're starting with really basic shapes guys really really basic shapes we don't want to get too complicated here we don't want to start adding any grass or anything like that we just want the basic contours and shapes the goal for this first phase of illustration is to simply be able to look far away so if I zoom out, I want it to look like a real photo because our eyes are blurry, right? We can't see that close. And so if it looks like a real photo, we chose the right colors and we're following the right rules for gradation. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you really want to see the Jeb cam again. Is that true? <laughs> I do. I definitely want to see the Jeb cam. So let's jump in. <laughs> He's really sleeping. Sorry, I'm talking way too loud. Look at little Jebby. Look at him sleep. <laughs> Man, I love Jeb. Jeb is such a sweet boy. He's been with me for four years, and he's been uh, hanging out with me through thick and thin. So I really, really like Jeb. Oh no, he. I, I guess he's shy. I guess he's shy, guys. Let's see here. I don't think he likes the camera, but I'll try and be a little bit more quiet here. <laughs> All right, so let's add in some more orange here. It looks really vibrant, doesn't it? Um, and we're gonna fix that. We're gonna do a lot of black shadows and colors all over the, the foreground here to make it look a little bit more creepy, um, more like it's uh, in the evening, in the autumn. Okay, let's see here. Keep filling this in. And let's do a little bit of a color overlay here. Just blend that color a little bit. There we go. And let's keep making our way up. All right. So we can put some ground right here. Sometimes you can't draw perfectly with a mouse, so you just kind of have to keep trying. <laughs> okay, let's fill in to a perfect orange here. This is gonna be the ground that our player can actually walk on, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in some foreground elements as well. There we go. Awesome. Grab some. There we go. Okay, let's do a color overlay. And if you guys are hearing thunder during this video, it's because I've added in some thunder effects just to get an idea of how I want this world to sound and how I want it to feel. Sometimes it's not perfect, but that's okay. Sometimes it's just about discovering what you're working on. Um, a lot of times I don't really know what my world looks like until I filled in all the colors. And then it slowly starts to make a lot more sense. So there's our foreground. I'm gonna do a color overlay. Just blend a little bit. There we go. That looks awesome. <laughs> and one more down here. It's gonna be pretty dark. And right now it kind of looks like a desert, but it's gonna be crazy seeing it slowly become more of a grassy world uh, in the evening when we start adding some uh, grass in the distance. 
and uh, also some shade coming down from the bottom here. So I'm going to go to this background and just to make this feel a little bit more like evening, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this dark color here and drop it down. Whoops. Got to make sure we choose the right one. There we go. And I'm going to just pull it down like so. A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. And then there we go. So now it's looking a little bit darker, right? And I'm going to go ahead and rasterize all my layers. Currently they have color overlays on them. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize the layers. And just like you guys, you're probably thinking, mm, not a huge fan of these colors. And I would have to agree with you. The color palette I chose is not perfect. The benefit of being a digital artist is you can change whatever you want while you're working on it. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize all these layers. And then I'm going to show you how we can tweak the colors in the middle of working on this thing. So it's okay if you choose the wrong colors. What I'm going to do is go to color balance and I'm going to shift more towards the, ah, oh, there we go, more towards the red. That's the colors I want. And a little bit more towards, let's see here, that's not good. How about blue? No, that looks good. Okay, so we did a little bit of a color balance. I'm going to drop the opacity a little bit. Awesome. That looks great. I really like how that looks. And maybe we can drop down the saturation a little bit. No, I like the saturation. Maybe shift a little bit. There we go. That's what I wanted. So look at the difference. That's what I want. Okay. So the way that we fix this is we actually just take these colors here, apply them to each layer. So you can hold Alt, duplicate them, and just add them and apply them to every single layer here. And then we're going to make our way all the way back up the layers. And I know you guys can't see the layers. Sorry about that. There we go. We're going to make our way all the way up the layers and just merge all the layers together. Every individual layer we're going to merge together. Guys, the reason why we're doing it this way is because, especially when you're working in 4K, um, your file size can get really big. So you want to make sure that you're keeping everything rasterized and if you have smart objects or you're using you know smart layers or any kind of effects they can slow things down significantly so I'm gonna merge them all together if that's okay with you guys all right let's merge the layers what's Jeb doing oh he's tired he's been he's had a rough week he got a haircut last week and so he's been kind of a moody Judy that's okay though got to get haircuts, Jeb. You got to get a haircut. Right? Right, guys? Bring! There he is. Go to sleep, Jebby. All right. So everything's merged together. I'm not going to worry about laying my uh, layering or naming my layers just yet. I'm going to go ahead and add a character really quick to this world. I want my character to be right on this layer here. So what I'm going to do is just create a little girl. She's going to be running through this world. Guys, the reason why I create a character is so that I can get an idea of scale. So she's going to be wearing, I don't know, a flowy cape or something. There we go. Um, and why not add a little ponytail? Like that. It might feel kind of interesting having it sort of separated from her head and look a bit stylistic. All right. And I'm going to use the pencil tool to create some eyes. And I'm not going to use a true white, okay? In our world, this is the color of white, okay? So I'm going to zoom in and just add these here. Awesome. Merge these layers together. Zoom out. And now we have just this very subtle little girl in the distance. Who knows, maybe this game is a very moody, expansive game where you have a tiny little character and you walk around the scene. That would be really cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and add some detail. So I think what I want to do for this landscape is Let's start with the foreground details, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to this one. And again, guys, I'm just using this simple mouse and I'm gonna try my best <laughs> to draw some foreground grass, okay? There 
there we go. Make it look like the wind is sort of blowing the grass. Select that, hold space, shift, so that I can select more. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see here, grab this color here and just fill in what we've got. There we go. So you can see adding those details makes things start to look a little bit more moody, right? Let's go ahead and jump back to this layer here, do the same sort of thing. Just add in some grass. And it's gonna be hard working with a mouse, guys. But I actually made the majority of my game Never Song, which is out on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation, Xbox, Apple Arcade, Steam. I made the majority of that game uh, just by using a mouse. I'm a big fan of, I guess, illustrating from a graphic design perspective, which means using a lot of simplistic shapes and really worrying about color as opposed to making it feeling sketchy or whatever. Um, so I might move to a, a Wacom tablet for these next uh, illustration videos that I do. Um, just to show you, I guess, both worlds. Um, but this is, uh, this is great. So all I really need right here is a mouse. Okay, so now that we're looking at our little girl here, you can see that, um, well, first off, we can probably put her behind. So drag and drop behind. There we go. And we can probably um, just reference her size here when we're creating our grass. So that's a good reason to have a character in your scene. And we might want to flip her around because the wind looks like it's blowing in the opposite direction of the grass. And we don't want that. So I'll do that in a bit here. There we go. There we go. It's okay to make a mistake like that. Just hold shift and fill it in. All right. We're just going to keep drawing here. There we go. Keep it on. Keep it on going. There we go. And just fill it in. There we go. Press G to fill in. You all right, Jebby? He's just wiggling around while he sleeps. All right, so far it's looking pretty cool. And I'm just gonna jump back to the previous scene here, or the previous layer here. And there's a point where you need to stop adding details, guys. So I think this might be the layer where we're done doing grass. So it's just gonna be a, a sort of a wobble. The human eye can't see all those details, so. I think that it's okay to do something like this here. There we go, whoops. And then this looks a little strange right there, see that? There we go. And we'll add in just a little wiggle here. And that's about all we need. I'm gonna grab that color, fill it in, zoom out. And we could probably add a little bit of a wobble to this one as well, just to add some kind of subtle details here. Nothing crazy. Here we go. Something like that. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Yeah, that looks perfect. I really, really like that a lot. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start adding some subtle fog to our scene to make it look like this world is almost a dreamscape. So what I'm going to do is actually save this. <laughs> make sure you save your art. I'd hate for this to be... Uh, destroyed because of a glitch, right? So I'm going to go ahead and save it in my little YouTube folder here. I'm going to do illustrations and I'm going to save this and call this Halloween landscape. That looks great. Okay, so fog would actually be really, really helpful for particularly this layer here because there's a lot going on here that I don't really want to see. So what I'm going to do with fog, this is actually really cool. I'm going to create a new layer, press alt, and grab the gradient tool and then pick the color behind it. And that's gonna be the color of our fog. See that? Just a subtle pulse. And then I can even grab some, like right here, and just delete it. Something like this, right? To make it feel like it's sort of rolling through our world. And then I'm gonna do a blur, a motion blur. There we go. 
And let's drop it down just a tad. And then maybe we could rotate it a little bit. All right. That looks awesome. I really, really like that fog. Let's go to this scene here and do the same thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw out the fog. And I'm going to grab the color behind it, which is this. Not the fog, but this. And then do a gradient up. And then motion blur. Awesome. This one would benefit from some fog as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw out some fog like this. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And then a gradient up of the color in the background, right? Which is this. Do a little bit of motion blur. That's really pretty. I like that a lot. I'm going to select this layer here. I'm going to add some fog on top of it. So let's just go ahead and draw some zigzags. All right. There we go. And I'm going to grab the color behind it, which is this one right there. And then do a little bit of motion blur as well. Hey, let's just go ahead and add it to all of them. I'm really liking the way it looks, so <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I feel like you can't go overboard with fog. It just makes your scene look so pretty. All right. I'm going to grab this here and do a pulse up, do a little bit of motion blur. There we go. Save it out. All right. So let's go ahead and keep adding some fog here. Adding fog is probably one of my favorite uh, parts of illustration because it just makes everything pop it really does and it also really helps separate this character from the background okay so I would say that you should really focus on the fog behind your player okay you really want the player to separate and you can barely see the difference between these two colors here so it's really important to separate those, those out so I'm going to grab the color behind there we go there we go. And then I'm going to do a motion blur. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the same with the ground here. Awesome. Man, I'm really, really liking this. I'll be honest, guys. When I started this video, I was like, uh-oh, this does not look good. <laughs> but it actually looks really cool. I like it a lot. Are you guys curious how Jeb is doing? Are you curious how Jeb is doing? Okay. I'll jump to the Jeb cam in just a sec here. Let me let me get uh, one more layer of fog. There we go. Something like that. And then I'm going to grab the color behind. There we go. And do a motion blur. Awesome. Save our scene. And let's see if we can see how Jebby's doing. Well, there's his back. <laughs> He's just hiding from the camera today. Oh, uh, well, there you go. There's Jebby. All right. <laughs> the next thing on my list is actually adding some kind of bevel to our world, making things smoothly transition into various gradients. So what I'm going to do is actually just go ahead and add an inner glow to every single layer. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and merge all of our layers before we do that, just so everything is nice and clean and concise. I'm going to merge all those layers together. There we go. Merge them together. And then let's start with the background here. And we're going to do an inner shadow or an inner. We're going to do an inner shadow. You could do an inner glow, but I'm actually going to do an inner shadow. I misspoke earlier. I'm going to do an inner shadow and I'm just going to choose this color here. See that? So now we're getting some three dimensional look to that mountain in the background with let's make the size pretty large. Now you can see here we have some weirdness going on here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and rasterize this layer. And this is a little trick I'm going to do just for this mountain because it goes up so high. I'm going to grab that color and I'm going to go ahead and do something like that. See that? Now I'm adding some shadow to that mountain so we can see it distinctly. Okay. I'm going to merge those layers together. And then I'm going to go ahead and add an inner shadow to every single layer to make it look a little bit rounder. The, make the mountains look a little bit rounder, something like that. And you can be a little more particular with choosing your color. You don't have to follow the rules exactly. So I'm going to pick, yeah, that color looks pretty good there. Uh, there we go. I like that a lot. 
that looks awesome okay same with this one here we're gonna just actually just duplicate that effect onto each layer Ooh, that looks really cool let's crank up the opacity I like that a lot okay same here nope a little too aggressive so I'm gonna just choose this color here and mm, that's a little too there we go there we go made it a little bit lighter it looks like we forgot about this layer here so I'm gonna go backwards there we go that looks pretty good actually I'm not, I don't think I need to do anything to that layer I'm gonna save this out I'm gonna do the same for this layer. Looking pretty good. I think I could just drop down the opacity for that just so we see a subtle details. Do the same for this one. Okay. Oh, that looks great. This one here, almost. Let's just drop down the opacity a little bit. Whew, that looks so pretty. And this one, we could probably change the color to this more red, orange. There we go and just crank up the opacity a little bit. And these look a little too simplistic, so I'm gonna add some inner shadow to those. There we go. Man, I like that a lot. That looks really cool. I've never made a scene that looks like this before. So I'm really actually pleased with how it's looking. Okay, very good. I like that a lot. So now we can go ahead and start adding some trees to our world. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna start adding some creepy trees, okay? So I think adding some fluffy trees for now is great. If, you're, if there's too many dead trees, the world can seem like a desert. So I wanna add a lot of fluffy trees with some highlights on them. And then after that, I can actually go in and add maybe one single dead tree that's more of the central focus of this world. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some trees. So I think I want to add a tree behind this layer here. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to just add this fluffy expanse of trees here. Okay. Stuff like that. Ooh, that's really pretty. I like that a lot. That's going to look so cool. And let's just come over here as well as so I'm holding shift and I'm creating this world and or this tree. <laughs> I've been watching way too much Bob Ross. He uses the word world a lot. So I'm going to pick this color here, fill that in, and that looks awesome. I'm going to use the gradient tool to go ahead and add just some highlights over here. There we go. Maybe take that color and drop it down a little bit just like this. That actually looks pretty cool. I like that. And drop down the opacity. There we go. Okay. I was worried there for a second. I'm like, what am I doing here? Okay, and what we can do is actually just use our paintbrush to fill in some fog. So probably this right here, and just add in some subtle pulses of fog like that. There we go, I'm just clicking, clicking, clicking. <laughs> there we go. And hey, why don't we go ahead and maybe increase the opacity a little bit and add some to here as well. There we go, that looks awesome. Cool. Okay. Now what we're going to do is add in some strokes to create some branches. So a little point here, little point here, little point, little point here, little point here, little point there. There we go. Just creating some branches in the distance. And I'm fine making them pretty dark. So I'm going to pick the dark color of our little girl here and grab those drop down the opacity like that and what I like to do is create a mask on them and then just sort of fade out the tips of them see that the tips and the bottoms of them I just fade out like this oh man that looks really pretty I really like that this one's a little too thick so I'm just gonna go ahead and select some portions of it and delete save that and what don't we go ahead and just add a little bit more to about right here okay maybe a little bit more detail there all right there we go I like that okay and one here as well just a little bit and we're gonna just fill in with a darker color and then we're gonna do the same thing just blend between those two layers here 
Oh man, that looks really pretty. I like that. Same is true with the bottom, just so it looks foggy. Okay. Here we go, something like that. And let's add in some tree branches. And you know, in order for us to see the tree branches, we probably wanna just have it a little bit more blended into the previous layer. So that looks good, that's much better, okay. And I'm gonna fade out this edge over here because it's a little here let's see here let's merge all these together here whoops merge all these layers together and do a subtle fade there we go that looks kind of cool I like that I'm just gonna subtly fade there we go okay I think that looks pretty good for our trees so I'm gonna go ahead and merge these together and then I'm gonna create some more trees um, I think one, let's see here, let's put them right behind here. Here we go. We're just going to go crazy high with some big forests right about there and have it sort of extend. There we go. I like that. That's going to look really cool. Okay. And fill them in with a dark red. See that? That looks awesome. I really, really like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just create some gradients here. You okay, Jeb? Oh, he's sleeping hard. He's sleeping really hard. So let's go ahead and take this color here and just sort of fade up like that. Oh, man, that looks so pretty. Really looks like a ton of fog. Let's go ahead and add some detailing to the fog here. I really like the way that looks. There we go. And just cut some of this off. And then do a motion blur. Ooh, that's so pretty. Wow. I really like that. Let's blur it a little bit. It looks a little too detailed for something that far away. So just do something like that. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> I really like that a lot. And I think we could add a little bit of detail here. Okay. I want to live in this world. It's so creepy. I love it. For those of you who have been following me since the beginning of this channel, you know that I love creepy stuff. Today I tried to get my daughter to watch uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. She's two. And I, don't, I think she's a little too young for that, <laughs> for that movie. I remember that movie really creeped me out growing up. So we watched Coco instead. Um, which Coco is just incredible. I love that movie. It's creepy, but not too scary. Let's save our scene here. And let's go ahead and add in just a subtle pulse of blended color around the tops of our trees like this. See that? Oh man, that looks awesome. I like that a lot. We're going to save that and then guys, let's just add in some tree branches. Okay? So I'm just going to grab my lasso tool and just choose to draw some trees here. Some big chunks. Just like that. Okay. Wow. I really like the way this looks. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes I get a little bit impressed by my own artwork. And then I look at it a day later, and I'm like, that sucks. <laughs> All right, let's fade this out here. Oh, man, that's cool. And I'm going to go ahead, and just like we did previously, I'm going to sort of fade out the trunks a little bit like this. See that? We're just making it not so obvious that they're just, I don't know, little simple shapes I drew. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more detailed. Wow, that is a really cool looking forest. <laughs> I like that a lot. I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'm just going to add in a little bit more bushes and trees. Oh man, that's going to look cool. And I'm going to do that dark color here. Oh wow, that's awesome. I kind of want it to be darker. Let's go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm going to decrease and maybe crank up the saturation. Whoops. Here we go. Wow. That's going to be cool. I like that a lot. And why don't we go ahead and add in a couple big bushy trees sort of hanging out above right here, just like that. Yeah, 
That, that looks really cool. Maybe one right here as well. That's awesome. That's going to be really cool. And maybe a couple right here as well. This uh, past week I've been looking, just for fun, looking at land. One day I'd like to buy some land like this. And there was one piece that I looked at that looked a lot like this. I live in South Carolina. And uh, it's just an amazing feeling. Walking through a quiet world, just listening to the breeze, with no city noise, no light pollution. I'm starting to think that Americans are missing out. Although I'll be honest, a lot of Americans are experiencing the outdoors. Maybe I'm just one of the exceptions to the rule. Maybe I need to get in on that, that action, you know? I'm gonna fill in here and all I'm gonna do is just add a new layer and apply it to the top. And I'm just gonna blend in with the background just to create some light streaming through. There we go, something like that. Okay, I'm gonna merge these together. Now, this one doesn't look perfect for me. I like it, but I think I'm gonna to need to just decrease the opacity. Whenever I feel weird about a scene or a layer, I'll just decrease the opacity of it. Um, yeah, something like that. That's pretty cool, I like that a lot. Okay, so we've got some trees there. And I think what we could do is go ahead and add in some creepy tree. Um, probably something like right here, okay? So it's gonna be behind our player. So let's see here. I think putting it right here might be really cool. So let's figure out the shape here. That looks really weird. I like that a lot. That's super cool. Very cool. I like that. Wow, that's a weird looking tree. <laughs> Maybe we can have it sort of smoothly hmm, come out of the scene here. There we go. Something like that. And then something like this. That's cool. I like that a lot. We're going to grab that red like that. And... Let's see here. That looks kind of weird, so I'm gonna cut a little bit out there. That's not really how trees work. They always get thinner, right? And I'm gonna get the shape down of this tree before I actually go ahead and uh, get the color correct. Make sure I save our scene and rotate it just a bit. I want it to be smoothly, sort of really pointy right there coming out. That looks cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's thin this up a little bit. Like I said, guys, I'm just using a mouse here, so it's kind of hard to draw stuff like that. That looks kind of cool. Maybe cut out a little circle right here so it looks like a branch. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And let's see. Let's just start adding some branches, guys. That looks weird. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Fill that, whoops, I pressed F on accident. There we go. And fill that in. There we go. All right. All right, I really, really like this tree. I also really like the like button. If you guys could click the like button, that would really mean a lot to me. Just click the like button and that'll help the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to make this channel you know, get a million subscribers. That would be really cool if we got a million subscribers for this channel. That would be so cool. So I'm gonna just follow my instincts here and add weird circles and knots there. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the, the like button helps the YouTube algorithm. So if you guys wanna click it, that would really mean a lot to me. I kind of like those circles. That's really strange. Um, I'm not really following the logic of trees here. I'm actually just, uh, following what my, I guess, my design sensibilities <laughs> are telling me. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a tree branch like right here. That is a really big tree branch. Let's try again. <laughs> there we go. 
Ooh, that's weird looking. Kind of looks like an upside down jellyfish. I'm going to cut that portion out. Whoa. I'm going to cut that right there. Oh, there we go. And fill that in. And then do a little color overlay. Just a very subtle color overlay so that it sort of blends in. There we go. Save. And then let's do a couple more of those as well. Rasterize that layer, and I'm just going to go ahead and add in. Let's see if we can make that work. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, like a Medusa tree or something. That's really cool. Okay, let's grab this color here and do a subtle fade. Yeah, we could probably shrink these down. Let's see here. No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to shrink that down. Whoops. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this. That probably looks a lot better. Okay. So there is our general shape for our tree. It's kind of almost looks like it's a like a hand grabbing up from the background. Like you could fall into this section here, which I love that. I love when trees look like that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those two, merge all of this stuff together. And I'm going to add in just a few more tree branches, okay? So something like this, just some branches coming out of it. There we go. That looks really cool, I like that. Let's subtract there, there we go. And maybe one coming up like this. Maybe a few down here. Maybe one right here like that. Uh, maybe we could make some grass right there. And I'm gonna fill those in. Whoops, command D, that is so weird looking, I love that. And I think a tree can look really cool when you add more branches towards the top, obviously, than the bottom. So let's try and make it a little bit more detailed at the top here. That's awesome. I'm gonna fill in those colors there. That is a weird looking tree, I like that a lot. It looks a little harsh, so we're gonna go in and change the lighting of it after we finish up all of the various uh, shapes. So we can probably do the same with this background piece here. So something like this, like that. Oh wow, I like that a lot. That's really cool, okay. Fill that in. Mm. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Merge the layers together. All right, we got ourselves our tree now. So we can go ahead and add in just a few, I think, leaves would be cool. So I'm actually going to use the pencil tool. And I'm just going to create some dots. There we go. That was something like this. I want a dead tree. I want a dead tree. I'm changing my mind on you guys. Sorry. Let's merge those layers together. And what I'm going to do is blend in with the background here. Just like so. There we go. That looks sweet. And I think adding some darkness on the left side might make a lot of sense. So I'm going to go ahead and get pretty dark here. There we go. Something like that. That looks pretty sweet. And then why not add a little highlight, just a subtle highlight coming down this branch here. And then maybe a tree trunk piece there, just to add some dimension. And I'm going to use the yellow color here and then the orange color here. There we go. Fade it down like so. Merge those together. Got ourselves our tree, and I'm just gonna cut some pieces out. I noticed this looks kind of weird. Cut that out, cut that out. And we could probably blend a little bit more. Let's do this. Oops. Let's use the brush. There we go. Notice how I 
tend to pick colors from the background that are closest to it so that we have a nice sort of blurry blend. That looks awesome. The way that we're gonna make this really pop though, guys, is we're going to actually create another tree in the foreground that's sort of um, another tree just hanging out. So I can actually get rid of the swatches. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna save this out. And I'm gonna get another tree towards the foreground. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said it looks super vibrant now, but we're gonna add foreground elements that really get dark and black and suck a lot of that light out. So I'm just gonna add one big tree coming from the corner here that's in the foreground. Make it pretty thick, right? Like that. Remember, tree branches get smaller as they go up. You wanna make sure you follow the laws of tree branches, even though that looks nothing like a, a tree I've ever seen. It still has, I don't know, a natural shape to it. Um, so I think that's a cool looking tree. I think we could probably get a little vine sort of coming there. That looks cool. And maybe get a little bit more branchy right here. Is that a word, branchy? <laughs> and then finally, we're gonna go pretty black here. Not, not a true black, but close to black. So something like that, okay? And what we could do, I really like doing stuff like this, is grab the circle tool and you can create some moss. So just create some circles here. Actually, let's make it a little bit thinner and cut off the top portion here and then fade it. I did a lot of this in Neversong, which was my game I released on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation and Xbox. <laughs> Thanks to Serenity Forge, my publisher, I was able to release it on a ton of platforms, which was just awesome. That was really cool. All right, so let's just keep adding some moss hanging from our trees here. That's pretty cool looking. I like that a lot. And maybe put a few pieces here just to make it look more vignetted, right? Save that out. And honestly, we could probably put a little bit more detailing here. So I'm going to do some cuts into the tree. There we go. Something like that. I'm going to merge all that together. Why not? And then finally, maybe a few spindlier. Well, no, we could probably do a, a sort of gnarly tree right here, a root or something. That would be really cool. I like that a lot. And don't worry, guys. We'll make it look more lit. Right now they look very simplistic, but uh, we'll add some lighting to them in just a second. That's sweet. Yeah, something like that. That's really cool. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, we're gonna merge this together. And then why don't we just go ahead and using the paintbrush tool, faintly add in some blending around. Using the colors behind the object, we're gonna add some blending. That looks pretty cool, I like that. Maybe some orange here. That's cool. For some reason, this, one, this uh, tree to the left here is bothering me right about here. It's sort of cutting into this tree, so I'm gonna remove it. There we go, that looks a lot better. Okay, and because it's Halloween, guys, let's just add some creepy eyes. So, we're gonna just take some eyes here, or create some eyes here, and grab the white. Don't worry, they'll look orange in a second. And I'm gonna rotate and duplicate these eyes hanging out in the trees. Okay, that will look orange in just a second. Right now, they just look white. The way that we make them look orange, there's a little bit too many there. There we go. The way we look, make them look orange, we merge them all together and we add a glow. There we go. Let's do that vibrant orange. That's scary. That's a creepy looking tree. I like that a lot. Um, let's go ahead and I think we can commit to what we've got here. Got, is that a word? No, that, is, that, is that proper English? I'm trying to think. Let's commit to what we've got here. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Oh man, yeah, sometimes my English is really bad and that's the only language I speak, that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create that haunted house that we were talking about, okay? It's gonna be really, really easy to do, watch this. I'm gonna just do a simple, thin, tall shape in the distance here, right? Maybe add a chimney, like that. 
cut out some pieces here. We're going to fill that in with that yellow. And we're going to go pretty tall here. That's great. Okay. We're not done yet. Hold on. We're going to add in some fog. Right? And then we're going to add in some fog at the top here. That's so creepy. I love that. Part of me feels like it should be sort of skewed following the contour of the land. That is awesome. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just go ahead and we're going to add in a few windows so it looks like an actual house. So something like this, something like this, maybe a big one like that, and right there. And we're just going to add that white color. There we go. We're going to fade from the bottom of the window to the top of the window. Makes it look like the light is coming from the ceiling. Like that. Awesome. We could probably make this uh, a little bit smaller. So apparently I just pasted in an old Im image I was working on. That was weird. So I think that... Uh, that looks pretty cool. I like that. That's pretty sweet. All right, guys, the last thing before we go into texturing is just add in some trees or some leaves blowing in the wind. Just like that. If you guys are curious what Jeb looks like, he's just chilling. He's just chilling. His body is turned away from the camera. All right, so let's go ahead and add in some leaves. What you wanna do with leaves is get some varying sizes um, you know, nothing crazy here. There's a little too many right there and a little too many right there. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to do a subtle gradient for these. So something like that. Okay. And add a motion blur. So this is just a reference for our particles, um, in the actual game. Once we, you know, bring this into unity, that's just a reference for us to see what it looks like. So I'm going to save that out. And now that we've got everything looking beautiful, I think we can go ahead and, ah, you know, let's just merge everything together. Let's commit to something here. We're going to merge <laughs> all of this together. I'm going to crop it out and save it. Got to commit, right, guys? And then, whoop, don't trash it. <laughs> create a new layer. And all I'm going to do is create some highlights. This is my favorite part. So I'm going to assume that the light is coming actually from the top left. Okay. So we're going to just start adding in some highlights. I'm just going to draw various uh, selections here for bits of this world. And this is more of a concept art piece, guys. You definitely wouldn't want to merge all your layers together um, for your actual game, right? But for me, this is more of a concept art piece. And so I think that's okay that we're going to merge all this stuff together. There we go. Once you get the concept art piece created, um, then you can certainly go in and uh, make everything more modular. Just creating some highlights here. Nothing crazy. And this will make sense once you guys see it. Okay. So first things first, we're going to do the highlights here. So let's grab a, a highlight from there as well. Uh, maybe one right here. Okay. And I think we could probably put a highlight where the player's walking. Just some subtle shines of highlight. Okay. Maybe a few right here. Things get more detailed when they come towards the foreground, guys. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in a white highlight here, and then I'm going to do an overlay. See that? So that overlay is causing things to shine a little bit more. Obviously, it's very aggressive right now. So I'm going to use the paintbrush tool to sort of fade a lot of these highlights out. Yeah, there we go. The highlights just add a little bit of detail, make it look like there's a little bit more intention to your world. So nothing crazy, just very subtle highlights. Just guess and check through your painting of these highlights. Okay, that looks good. And now we're gonna add some shadows, guys. Man, the light is coming from the top left, so we're gonna get some crazy shadows like this. 
There's our tree shadow. Something like this, right? We have a little shadow for our player. Maybe we can program that in. I don't know. And then a shadow here. There we go. Remember, we don't want to have the shadow appear over this tree, so I'm going to remove that. There we go. And, hmm, probably some shadows back here. Now, obviously, you can do this after you... or before you merge your layers together. That was probably a mistake on my part. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add some black here, and then I'm going to do an overlay. Fade it out. Do a motion blur to in that direction. So motion blur to the right. There we go. And you still want it to look like a shadow, right? So you want some, some sort of cleanliness to it. There we go. See that? And then I'm going to just go ahead and fix any of the glitches. Not the glitches. <laughs> it's not in Unity yet. Um, fix some of the uh, overlapping of the shadows. All right, that looks great. I'm going to merge this together, guys, and then I'm going to add a little bit of a vignette. So this is, again, concept art, so we're going to just sort of vignette it. This is something you can do in Unity, though. That's awesome. Not, not so intense. Why don't we add a little bit of a bright flare right here of just white. That looks awesome. Maybe make it an overlay, though. Drop down the opacity. Whoops. There it is. Make it an overlay. Yeah, soft light would work. You know, you can't go wrong with a moon, actually. So let's go ahead and just create a moon. So something like this would actually look really cool. And it'll be only the outline of it, like this. Okay? And then why don't we go ahead and just make it a crescent moon. Something like that. There we go. Got ourselves a really pretty moon it looks like I drew it on the wrong layer looks like it's all together with the vignette but that's okay <laughs> all right got ourselves a moon here and one final step guys and I'm just gonna paste this over top create some texture overlay that is beautiful that is really beautiful and what are we gonna call this scene and then one final thing, guys, I love to do a hue shift over top. So I'm going to go to Colorize, Saturation, or not Colorize. Um, I'm going to shift to, yeah, pinkish red. And then I'm going to go like this. And now we have this beautiful, subtle overlay. And then one final step, guys, I love this pink color. So I'm going to go ahead and do a fill, and then I'm going to add in, there we go, the lighten effect and drop it down. There we go little too saturated for my taste drop down the saturation a little bit Whew, that looks so good and then merge all of our layers together duplicate add a Gaussian blur and then I'm going to mask away all of it and just have this white to blur some aspects of the foreground Just like so, and maybe some aspects of the background here and some of that. And just drop down the opacity of that. So now we have this beautiful scene here. And I'm going to sign my piece. It's okay, Jeppy. Are you okay, buddy? You alright? It's alright. Okay. I'm going to just sign my piece. So there's my concept art, right? All right, we could even name this game. What do we want to name this game, guys? How about Autumn's Eve? That looks great. And then just, hmm. Oh, that's that's a cool font. It's Autumn's Eve, that's called Streamster. And then we're gonna just drop down the letter spacing. I like to make sound effects so I get an idea of how it's going to look. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a nice full screen. Can we do that? 
I think we can. <laughs> I don't know if we can, actually. 200%? Nope. We can't do a full screen. But, guys, that is how we're going to do illustration for a beautiful Halloween scene. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. And click the notification bell, do all that cool stuff. And if you guys are interested in learning more about illustrating for your games, selling your games, launching your game, coding your game, pretty much everything you want to do with games, guys, I've been doing it for a decade and I actually created an online course called fulltimegamedev.com. If you want to click the link in the description, that would really mean a lot to me for you guys to check it out. There's also some free resources available if you don't want to purchase the course. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Well, well what am I trying to say? <laughs> Thanks for listening to me ramble. I'll talk to you later. Bye.